Hey everyone, it's Ivan, KitBadger.com, out here for another gun review, and today I'm talking about this little guy right here, which is the Quick Hatch by Rifle Dynamics. If you had the opportunity to actually see my like build video on this before YouTube decided to delete it, even though it did not actually go against their guidelines, I actually had the good fortune going down to Rifle Dynamics in Las Vegas, Nevada, and building this thing. It was really cool. And quick side note, if you go over to Utreon, you can actually, I'll make sure they're linked down below, but you can actually go watch the build videos where it is not a build like how to step by step, largely an overview of what I got to do when I went and built this thing out. Overall, really cool process. One, AKs are something that I've done stuff, training stuff in the past with, never really got into like building them. And on the one side you have ARs, which are like Legos, and then you have this, which is wildly different, like pressing rivets and yeah, totally, totally different, but really cool experience down there. And yeah, got to basically put this thing together. Went through the whole thing with those guys, awesome group of people over there. And since then, I've actually shot this a lot. With respect to the quick hatch itself, it comes as basically a nine inch 762 by 39 AK pistol. On the back, you have a 1913 trunnion. This one has a stock affixed, this being the Q stock and their hinge. And it actually comes, I want to say, with basically a buffer tube by Midwest Industries, I want to say, that you can put a pistol brace on or at least you could see how that plays out and comes i want to say with a tango down grip this right here is a prototype from rev firearms now die free co kind of collaboration there and it's pretty neat up front you actually have a tunable gas block so depending on what you want to do and how you like shooting i.e why not shoot suppressed also, anyone remember when YouTube started handing out strikes for putting silencers on and then deleted my whole channel because of it? Because they're like, you're basically building a firearm because they're grossly ignorant of firearms. I still remember. But being able to shoot this thing suppressed is awesome. You can, there's a set screw down in here for that gas setting and you can basically crank it down and restrict gas or open it up and let more gas in. I will say there's no like deep set catch thing in there. So I actually screwed it down. Like I'm like, ah, let me restrict the gas a little more. Finally, that set screw actually fell into where the piston is. I'm like, how is this gonna come out? And then I just disassembled it and pulled that set screw out, put it back in and started it again and got it tuned. So that can happen, not a game stop or a show stopper. The rail up front, pretty cool. It's by Occam Defense. Those guys have done some, or that gentleman has done some really amazing stuff for AKs. And what it really does is help just kind of move this whole gun into the 21st century. If you saw my video on the FAL, it was not very flattering for that gun. And honestly, that gun just, one, it's not very well supported, not very well used, like, globally. And on top of that, it just doesn't, doesn't modernize very well. But there's been some cool stuff to include this rail back and defense that has allowed the AK platform to, yeah, come into the 21st century and still be viable. Still have the opportunity to mount things securely, to include optics. And, yeah, I've really enjoyed shooting this gun. Somewhere back there is peanut wandering around. But I actually really love shooting this gun. First time I kind of shot it earnestly was at a two day night powder course with Chuck Pressburg. He was at the farm kind of southwestish, I guess, Salt Lake City over in Utah. Did great. And I had it basically set up light, laser. I want to say for my illuminator, I was using a Kiji on there and a ITAOL, little Steiner laser. 
did good for me. It was really fun shooting it through that course. And again, like modernized AK. The ability to securely mount lasers, lights, optics, all of those things. And after shooting it through that class, which I did really good at, I ended up shooting it, I think the next place was, I think actually Red October, which is a really fun, it's the ROKC Red October Kalashnikov Championship. Put on in part by Rifle Dynamics over there in Las Vegas. A bunch of different stages, shot this through all 10, I guess, day stages. Tons of fun shooting through those stages. Really, really fun. Then they actually had Red October After Dark, where, yeah, threw on the night vision again, shooting this thing at night under nods. Really fun. And for that, I changed out kind of the setup where I was actually running a mall on top of here. And then the same, I think I'd moved it down, but the same scout light. So I could run it with white light, green vis laser, which I did some. Again, really fun, really cool. Or I could actually run the mall in IR, flip my Surefire Vampire light over to IR. So it's kind of more of a flood, whereas the mall was set up tighter beam and shoot it that way. This thing did really good there too. I will say, a little side note, this, well, now it's on there good, but I have had, well, I'll take it off. So on here, I ended up putting on this Reardon manufacturing. It's their three prong flash hider. Does it hide flash? Not on a nine inch 762 by 39. No, it does not. I don't know that anything would. But the mounting interface matches up with Q stuff. No, I'm pretty sure Q won't warranty their cans if you use one of these. Have I ran into problems with it? Kind of. Actually, during that um, Red October, one of the courses, I was shooting prone. I'm like, what the hell's going on? Like, my rounds are like 15 feet in front of me. Like, not where I'm aiming. I'm like, why is that happening? Shot again. Like, you're hitting in front. I'm like, I know where I'm hitting. And sure enough, come to find out, the can had backed off a little bit. I don't know if that was just recoil impulse or... The mating surface because i want to say this is actually coated versus the cherry bombs which are just heat treated steel don't know sample size of one it did walk a little bit did not baffle strike i basically cranked this thing on that was a mulligan shot it again did great same way of shooting it through that next night so i don't know sample size of one but then shot this gun even more During the 2023 Winter Modern Minuteman course and competition, I actually shot this up here in North Idaho with Bill Rapier of Amtec shooting. Again, tons of fun, shot great for me. I actually ended up winning, which was extra fun, I guess. But yeah, this thing did really good during kind of the rifle course of fire as well, like during that competition. Granted, I had to do my part, but I ended up dropping two rounds totally on me, but it was really, really fun to shoot. And part of what's really nice too is this is a small package, like capability wise, collapse this thing down, pull this off, especially if you move that light back, like talking really small but also really capable because ballistically 7.62 by 39 really doesn't lose much coming out of a shorter barrel versus cutting something that basically all the terminal ballistics are predicated on speed, like 5.56. So definitely a capable gun. And at the same time, really compact. And for people that are totally stuck on, 
Yes, you can of course shoot it with your stock collapsed or no stock on there for that matter. Why you'd want to, I don't know. I don't know if I've finished the video, but I basically did a bunch of runs kind of on the timer, seeing how it all played out with respect to drawing this thing out and shooting with the stock or without the stock and maintaining an accuracy standard. Yeah, I don't know why people are married to that idea. If you have a stock and the ability, by all means, open the stock up, get a good stock or cheek weld, yeah, shoot it like a rifle. But overall, this thing has done a great job for me. Some people's question, of course, is this a laser beam? Well, you're working with a couple things. Nine inch barrel, 762 by 39 ammo, pretty much most of it made overseas steel cased. And one of the things I actually ran into is, while well, you can mount optics, largely red dots, does not, not very conducive to like a magnified optic. So went out, did the best I could, shooting this with a red dot, trying to refine it as best I could, that side picture, and shooting groups at 50 yards. So I did that with a bunch of ammo, and yeah, here's what I got. Shooting some Bernal, 125 grain soft point. First group coming in at 2.93 MOA. And my second group with that Bernal soft point coming in at 3.58 MOA. Then switching to some Brass Case Fiocchi, 124 grain full metal jacket. First group coming in at 4.13 MOA. And my second group coming in at 5.33 MOA with that Brass Case Fiocchi. Then moving over to some Wolf Polyformance. First group coming in at 3.88 MOA. And my second group with that wolf coming in at 4.34 MOA. Then moving over to some Hornady Black Ballistic Tips Brass Case. First group coming in at 3.29 MOA. And my second group with that Hornady coming in at 3.24 MOA. Then some Idaho Ordnance Factory using that same Hornady SST bullet. First group coming in at 2.28 MOA. And my second group kind of stringing out at 5.25 MOA. And lastly, some Bernal 762 by 39 full metal jacket. First group coming in with a flyer at 3.34 MOA. Getting rid of that flyer, dropping it down to 1.24 MOA. My second group with that Bernal full metal jacket coming in at 2.44 MOA. Am I happy with that? Yeah, honestly. I mean, it's a nine inch AK shooting 7.62 by 39. Like completely acceptable for me. And on top of that, if we're honest, someone else with this gun, same optic ammo, everything. I'm sure they could shoot better, but that's what I ended up getting out there that day. With all my time with this quick hatch, have I ran into any issues with this gun? Yes, and they largely hinge around, honestly, maintenance. You're like, but an AK doesn't, yeah, pretty much every gun needs some maintenance. And what I actually ran into is, Yes, even though this is a piston, still gets dirty. It's almost exclusively been shot suppressed. And I don't like go out of my way to clean guns or really clean guns unless they're like, hey, you have to clean me now, which eventually this did. What happened was it got so dirty, there's so much carbon in here that the trigger would actually stick back because of all the carbon. So I'd pull the trigger, it wouldn't reset. I would manually reset the trigger, fire it, manually reset, fire it. Actually happened at one of the stages at Red October. And then I put some lube on there because I did not want to clean it and continued to shoot it and it worked fine. So 
that was the thing. Also, I will say one of my very favorite things about this gun is the amazing paint job. So Titus, one of the actual like gunsmiths there, incredibly talented guy on numerous fronts to include artistically. He actually does a lot of their, I don't believe it's Cerakote, I want to say it's gun coat, and he does a lot of their art to include like their kind of quintessential like swamp thing. And he does some really cool stuff. And I told him, I was like, hey, this is what I would like. I really like for different reasons, the kind of historical pattern of in part because of the Marine Corps, but yeah, frog skin. And he's like, okay. And then he reached out to me and he's like, what about a little bit of blue in there? I'm like, do your thing, man. Like, I trust your judgment. And consequently, this thing came out and is amazing. Incredibly talented. Even little Easter eggs, like he actually put the Kit Badger logo in there, as well as the Rifle Dynamics logo in there. And guys over there are super cool. They actually lasered my Badger head logo on there too for Kit Badger. Overall, beautiful gun. And yeah, I just love shooting this thing. Price-wise, quick hatch, not cheap. Before this Q stock custom paint job, all that stuff, you're looking at like three grand slick. I recognize that as expensive. You're like, well, I could go over to Palmetto. Believe me, if your budget is under $1,000, by all means, go over to Palmetto State Armory. I will say that is not this. Not as a knock or anything like that, but there's a lot going on with this to include just what goes into it, things getting polished, all kinds of stuff, rails so you can actually meaningfully mount things and actually have them hold zero. Like, there's a lot that go goes into it. Like, and it's consequently a $3,000 gun. I recognize that is expensive, but if you're interested in something like this to include one of the coolest things that is in the gun industry, build days, you can actually go, whether it's this or one of their other offerings from Rifle Dynamics, sign up for a build class and get to, like I did, basically go take part and actually build your gun, which is a pretty darn cool opportunity. Overall, really stoked at pretty much everything. The opportunity to go down there, build this thing, get to see what goes into them, and yeah, I just love shooting this gun. It's a lot of fun. But there'll be links down below, take you over and check that stuff out. And last but not least, if you appreciate my content and want to support it, greatly appreciate it, whether it's liking and sharing videos or supporting me directly, either through Patreon or Utreon. Utreon? Make sure I pronounce that right. Basically, it's kind of similar to a combination of YouTube and Patreon. All that stuff helps me go out, create more content for you, and gives you early access to videos as well as some exclusive stuff. And if you want my content that maybe is somehow inappropriate for YouTube, you will find it all over on Utreon or, as I upload it, over to Rumble as well. As always, thanks for joining us at kitbadge.com. Look forward to seeing you next time. All the priests and the prophets and the peace missionaries.